Dolores A. Tremes, a game about pirates, pirates that are negotiating, betraying each other and trying to collect not as much loot as possible but the right loot as you will see. It is a game based on a rock, paper, scissors type of engine or secret and simultaneous selection of actions like some would say. Let's see what's, what's in the box. The box is small and cute and really nice looking. Here we have the roll book and look at the presentation, look at the nice presentation. I mean the deck of cards is all that, that is in the game, but look how it looks like it's coming out of the way. It's really nice little thing. These cards, you have a card which is the Dawn card, which is identical on both sides. It will be shuffled towards the bottom of the deck and when that shows up then the game is over. Then you have a set of message cards, you shuffle them together and then you only select some of them and the ones that you are using will go in the deck. So it's really neat. So these are cards basically that give you special effects. So the rule book tells you what the effect of each card is. Look at the nice art. And it's nice that you do not know exactly which effects are going to be available each turn each game and then you shuffle these together to form to form the main deck so the main deck will have some message cards but the majority are loot cards a lot of wine hooray representing different types of loot as you can tell from the color and the illustration and with different with different numerical values so you can see gold and umbrellas and other stuff now, you can play with more than two players, but I said this really is a two-player game, if nothing else also because if you're playing with more than two players, still only two players play at a time. So say you have three players around the table, we are presented with these three cards, then now these two players are taking a turn, and this guy is watching, then these two take a turn, and so on and so forth going around the table. So the more players you have around the table, then the more downtime you will have. I really think of this game as a two-player game and I enjoy it as a two-player game. So only two players play at a time. Uh, a de the dealer of that round draws four cards here and flips them face up and they need to be placed pretty much in two in two rows in two rows and you have to think of them, yes, as divided in two rows, one close to one of the players and one to the other. This division has game effects. Then the players can negotiate and can make agreements about what they're going to do next, how they're going to try to to share the loot, and those agreements are entirely non-binding. Then players use a rock, paper, scissor mechanic as they, as they simultaneously select an action with the position on their hand and they show it to each other. The actions can be peace with an open hand, fight with a closed fist, or first pick with a raised thumb. And depending on the combination of actions that the two players uh, have put there, then you see what happens next, you determine what happens next. If both players have been peaceful, then each player gets to take the two cards on their side. I'm sitting here, I get to take these two cards, and you're sitting there, you get to take those two cards. Because we were so peaceful, we shared equally. If a player chooses to fight and the other player chooses uh, to be peaceful, then the fighting player grabs them all. And you're already thinking, oh my gosh, fighting is such a powerful action, you can get so many cards, and, you know, being peaceful can, be, can mean being such a sucker. We'll see why getting a lot of cards may not be a good idea. Actually, there, many cases, there will be cases in which you do not want to take cards, you want to take as few as possible. So, there is that idea. If you want a lot of cards, go fighting, that usually grants you a possibility of getting some stuff. Now, if both players, however, choose to fight, that's a case where fighting doesn't work, if both players chose to fight, then all four cards are discarded, just destroyed in the mutual annihilation. If a player chooses first pick, and the other player chooses to be... Uh, to be uh, peaceful, then the first pick player chooses any one of the cards and the opponent takes the one or two remaining cards on their side. I was peaceful, you did that, then say you want this card and then I'm left with this one. You took that one, then as a peaceful player that goes after the first pick. That's what happens. First pick and fighting, first pick player 
through to the name of the action still gets to take any one card and that the player takes everything that's that's left finally both first pick well that somehow is a, is a devastating duo then um, the old four cards are discarded no sharing happens and then both players must simultaneously choose a set of goods that they own and they must discard it because these cards that you're taking from there they'll go to form sets you place them in sets depending on, on the symbol so you place all types all loot cards of the same type together say like this for example here and here these would be like my sets and if there were two first picks then I had to lose one of my sets now this is the general idea, the game continues like this, you replenish the supply, you replenish the supply uh, where after a round and two players will then go and again select actions and get cards, you assign the cards, some are discarded, sometimes all are assigned, you continue like this until the dawn card shows and the dawn card is towards the bottom of the deck, at that point the game is over and you score points. And here's really the clever twist which elevates this game past uh, just a rock, paper, scissor variant. You do not get to score all of the sets that you have. The value of a set is the sum of the numerical values printed on the cards that form the set. So this set is worth 7, this one is worth 2, this one is worth 1, and 1, 3. But you only get to score your highest value, your highest set, and your lowest set. And it is a tie you get to score all of the tied sets. So, for example, if this is my situation at the end of the game, then I get to score the 7 and I get to score the 1 and the 1, because they are both the lowest. These two sets, 2 and 3, are completely useless to me. So that would be my final score, which would be of 9 points. Now I think you start seeing why sometimes you want to be peaceful and you just want to get one or zero cards. You do not want to get a lot of cards. Because suppose that I worked very hard, very nice and hard, and somehow these are my two sets. I have like a five and a seven. Ah oh gosh, if the game was over now, I would get a nice number of points. But then... But then these cards, uh, these cards uh, are there, say, these cards are there, and I get saddled with them, boom, now all of a sudden I don't get to score the 7 and the 5, I get to score the, the 7 and a stupid 1. So there really are times where you do not want too many cards. On the other hand, well, if I were to get several cards that all have one and they're in a category that they don't have then I have a tie there I have a tie there and at least I get to actually score all of them so for example if this was the case I do not get to score this guy with seven but I get to score all of these ties and of course if you can create a lot of ties for the lowest that could be good now my lowest is two but there are two of them so I get to no, actually my lowest now is two and I get to score both of them so actually there may be cases where discarding some sets of goods that you have may be good I me mean, actually good because it allows you to thin out your your set um, why would you score the highest and the lowest thematically I have no idea maybe you know there are some goods you're creating scarcity you lowering the offer so you increase the demand very smart pirates very uh, very business oriented, but this is how the game works and the game works well. Also remember you have a couple of extra effects that allow you to mess things up, to change things, to manipulate the actions that the players can take, or to manipulate the cards that are available and you do not know exactly which are the special actions that are available. But this is the idea, it's a very simple game based on rock, paper, scissors, but to me much different from rock, paper, scissors, much more than just a variant. And uh, it's a fun game, I really enjoyed it, I enjoyed it much more than I expected. 
um, with all of the symbols that you have to remember and the interactions, I thought the game was going to be more complicated for what it has to offer. After like two turns, of course, you remember the interactions. After another couple of turns, you figure out how to use them. Like, oh, whoa, okay, I really don't want cards now. Oh my gosh, I don't want him to get that card. I'm going to get first pick so just that he gets stuck with something else. He doesn't get that one card that will allow him to strengthen not just to strengthen a set, but say to put a certain set on top of another one and score it or to make a tie between two high sets so then my opponent is going to score both sets. There are a lot of interesting decisions that arise uh, from the fact that the, the, the sets that score and the value will fluctuate. Not just the value will fluctuate, but which ones actually you get the score will fluctuate throughout the game. And you're trying to get the best that you can for your own sets and manipulate what your opponent is going. So you're taking into account what you may get and what you're going to leave on the table and what the opponent thinks you will do because you because of that of course then chances of uh, chances of bluffing will emerge negotiation i don't know maybe it's just the people i, I play the game with we don't even bother doing negotiations much because we know that no one no one is gonna do what, what they're saying and if they do is just by chance not because you made a promise not because you said you would so why do that when i'm just trying to figure out what you're gonna want to do i try to do that and what do you say gives me no information but that's just my game and my game group and there are the groups uh, other players uh, where negotiating may, may work and then from time to time no you usually you usually do what you say why do you do that so there is the negotiation bluffing element which may play a role in some groups even without it's a game that has interesting elements because you're still having the deduction element if not the bluffing element i'm trying to figure out what you want to do what you're trying to do and to react accordingly i like it it doesn't overstay its welcome and if it does then you all you need to do is simply to clean out the deck a little bit and the game will be faster uh, but i didn't think that it overstayed it's welcome now i wouldn't play with more than three players because yeah it's fun to see players that bluff and try to smart each other but then you are generating downtime so this i see this is a perfect two two player games perfect um two player game perfect um i not i don't know so much as a, as a couple game just because the rock paper scissors betrayal backstabbing mechanic doesn't always work when people well not only are they playing together but they live together and so there's just a more complex situation there uh but as a two-player game or a three-player game then i said uh, this is a really fun one i definitely enjoyed it i was plenty surprised the presentation is great the production value Values are really high, uh, the cards look great, they're thick and they're thick enough, they look durable. And gameplay is uh, both fairly intuitive once you get the, 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 the meaning of the, of the symbols or the gestures. It feels intuitive, but it has some depth. It has some depth, thanks again, because of this very original, very inventive scoring uh, system that results in a lot of interesting decisions and a lot of situations where you need to figure out you know what to do I, if anything i see maybe some players may risk um, the, the risk with some players would be to take the game too seriously actually and to start trying to th to think too hard and take every variable into account etc et then that probably well that kind of player probably would bog down the game but overall if you're you know if you're willing to put some thought into what's happening develop your strategy but do not overthink about what's going on then Dolores HMS definitely is a fun game I recommend it as a two three player game as a filler that plays like a filler is as fast and simple to play as a filler but it's more rewarding than than many other fillers I would say it feels deeper and definitely is more rewarding than that maybe the game has any right to be when you when you think that it is based around such a simple simple and basic um, group of concepts